Now we're going to show you some of the goo. Now we have some very specialized equipment here at Distortions and um, we are able to create amazing effects and uh, this is it. Hot glue gun with hot glue. So this is where you can make some very creepy slime. Very easy. And then it dries out. Put a little on his tongue there. That's always yucky. And so, you know, you can play with this. It, it, as it cools, you can add some more. Um, but uh, it just makes him a little nasty. Now, since he's had his head ripped off, he needs some of this. And this is made out of um, Liquitex gloss gel and food color. That's all it is. Okay, we'll let that dry a little bit and um, then we'll finish the eyes. Okay, we're back. Now, I'm gonna put on a thin, I'm gonna take the same white I use for the eyes, except I've thinned it with 70% rubbing alcohol quite a bit, maybe mm, half and half at least. Now, what's happening is I'm dulling it. It's like the, um, the clear coating of your eye has, you know, kind of gone yellow and, and it's muddying up your eye. That's a good looking zombie eye right there. Uh, I'm gonna make them even more. Now you don't wanna go too far cause you know, you wanna see see the eye somewhat, but it uh, gives them that creepy dead look. Okay, so now all that's left is to gloss it with five minute epoxy. And I am using Devcon five minute clear epoxy. And that's, it's from my tests, and I did run tests on this many, many years ago. It, um, now there's others that would work too, I'm sure. It's just that this doesn't seem to yellow. And so we like it. So you just put equal amounts of each in there. You can uh, get the, the tubes that automatically dispense the same amount, little, it's like twin hypodermic needles. And you stir it up real good. And you just put it right on. Make sure to get the whole eye and uh, just thick enough so it doesn't run, but, um, but you know, thin enough to cover the whole eye without running is basically what you're shooting for. That is the eyes. For many, many years, this was the number one way we painted here because super, super fast. So here we go. We're gonna start with flesh. And this is the rubber latex water mix. I start spraying up, then I spray down, and that's it. Now, second comes the dark brown. This is where you keep your hard angle. Now you'll notice how that instantly gave him all these nice little wrinkles. It's, it's basically faking a lighting effect, like there's a light source above him. Here comes the off-white. Now when that dries, he'll be ready to go terrorize the city. Thanks for watching. Okay, so now I've got a kind of rough, blurry, the look I'm kind of going for. And this is a real good time to go in with your uh, water and brushes and sponges and it'll blur it, um, but it will also um, 
kind of clean it up and then you go back in for detail. So I'm just gonna go at it with the brush here and the sponge and you can see how, um, how it kind of cleans it up, but then it kind of blurs it, but then it's ready for fine detail. Now what I'm doing is kind of making mud and um, so now you can use natural sponges are really good. Um, smaller ones than this are good uh, for a little bit finer detail. And I, I actually take my finger and I'll kind of push the clay around a little bit with the, with the sponge. This is something uh, unique to water-based clay and especially wet. You can, you can really go in and, and move the clay around easily for a long time. It does start to stiffen up, and this is starting to stiffen up, but I can move the surface around anyway. Okay, then I go in, spray, kind of clean out some of my And don't, you don't always have to pull the trigger real hard. If you got something that's, you don't want to obliterate detail. So now I'm going in lightly and allowing the sponge to just give it kind of some texture and organicness and um, again I'm using my finger here to kind of break up the flat planes especially since he's kind of rotty. And that's it. I'll I'll um, I'll do the other side. I'll I'll dry it and then go in for uh, finer detail. Um, what I do usually is I'll just take this this spoon shape, which is already kind of the shape of of a tooth with the root and everything. You can kind of see that kind of tooth shape in there already. And I just have my clay kind of laid out in this big like palette, and I just kind of find you know the center line at least roughly as much as I can where the tooth might be and I just push this tool up into the clay to create where the root of the tooth where it comes out of the gum and you could just pull that down you know as as far as you can and that's kind of the the basic you know base shape for your tooth and where where it comes now you can just kind of follow that you know with with all the teeth if you want just to kind of lay out where they're going to be when I have that flatness I can go back in with the loop, you know, the, the round end of my loop or that spoon end of any one of these and just round it off and, and smooth it off a little more. So there's more of a, a natural kind of transition from the curve of the tooth root into that plane. And it has more of like a, you know, a, a natural realistic way of, of doing that. Then I can just lay in a line and just find, you know, where that ends. It's just all about, you know, refining it. What I did here, if you, you can see this is add a little bit of gum on top of there just to fill the mouth out a little bit and you're never you're confined to, to you know what's there you can always take away or, or add and I just added that little bit of gum up there and I'm gonna go in and just make sure that there's a little bit of anatomy in the gums too. make sure that they're connected and 
you know, they, they look like they're kind of draped over the teeth. And you can always, if you have to, just take a little booger of clay and put it in there. Just to uh, accentuate the gum in between the teeth. Distribute the talc a little bit, and there he is, your little monster. We're going to Dremel him up in the paint room and uh, paint him and turn him into a real little fella in color. See you there. All right, so we're ready to trim. So here we go. And a safety note with scissors. Never do this with your scissors. Ah! See that flange I left around here? That's going to make life easy. We're going to be able to trim real nice and clean. Oh no, I'm gonna have to get a new butt. This one's cracked. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> so you've got to trim this flange too. Now we're gonna dremel it, but you gotta get it pretty short to be able to uh, dremel it. So we'll get this off of there too. Now, as I was trimming, I noticed that there's a little problem here, little uh, mold error where there was an air pocket. So when I find out who made this mold, they're fired. That's it. We don't fool around around here. Okay. So now we have a Dremel tool that we use around here and you know, it's a little bit mighty, but we do a lot of stuff and we do it fast, but there are plenty of smaller craft Dremel tools that probably make more sense if you're not doing a lot of big monsters, but, uh, and this is a very good idea. You don't want to get stuff flinging at your eye at high speed. The other thing with Dremel tools is this one's air driven, but the other ones can be uh, electric or even battery powered. Just as long as they've got a little bit of beef to them and some kind of a, a sandy grinding stone to them. Okay, so he's got his hair cut and he's ready for going out on the town. So we're going to get him painted and ready to roll. Okay, now we're gonna put the ink rub out. Now see our other videos for uh, the paint, the, uh, the base was a latex um, uh, house paint mixture and then uh, this is gonna be an FW rub out and all the rest of them are FW inks and uh, five minute epoxy and so here we go. This is 70% alcohol. Okay, so this is FW Blue. Now the blue on green kind of gives it a, a little bit of a, like a different green color. In fact, I might do his nose in this. And I think I might do his...
It just breaks it up, looks a little different. So this is DevCon 5-Minute Epoxy. It's a clear, glossy medium and uh, it works great and it doesn't yellow. Okay, so we're done. And this little monster could be anything. He could be your girlfriend, your boyfriend. You could make a little dog, a little cat, a little alien from outer space, anything you want. Doesn't have to be cute, could be scary. Now you know how to make a two-piece mold and make a completely three-dimensional piece. Now, I just put a light, hazy circle around the eyes to indicate light. You know, it's, it's just receding. And then uh, put the whole um, iris black. Okay, going in for the fine detail. Now, um, the green. Now what I'm doing here is I'm coloring the inside and I'm leaving just a little bit of a black ring around the edge. Um, and uh, it's, it's a very fast way of getting, um, you know, a fairly realistic look. Now I've just taken a straight water-based paint. This is not thinned. It's, um, it doesn't have rubber in it. It's just straight paint out of the can jet black and I, I'm putting it on the wrong end of a paintbrush if you can see that. And I'm having her look up because she's dead. I don't know if you knew that. She's dead. Okay. Then my favorite pen trick. Uh, I like to come along the bottom with it, you can kind of color in the eye a little bit there and then in with the, uh, the veins.
Okay, now, now this is just a regular ink pen. It's got the ball point. Um, there's different kinds you can experiment, but uh, these work pretty darn good and they're very cheap. This would do probably a thousand zombies, maybe more. So the first thing we're gonna do is spray this maroon rub out on. Now, normally I would spray this on with a quartz sprayer. Marsh and I were having a conversation about this and it's like, no, let's, let's give them some really advanced techniques. Now you can paint this whole thing with a paintbrush, no problem. There's a, dozens of different ways to paint. Um, rub out is one of the best looking. And so we're gonna actually do some advanced techniques on this even though we're not using airbrushes and quartz sprayers and so forth. So this is 70% um, rubbing alcohol with uh, red, uh, uh, red ink, flame red, antler brown, and a little bit of black. And basically a good ratio to figure is about two ounces per quart of 70% alcohol. So I'm just gonna spray this on and we'll let it dry a little bit and we'll rub it right back off. I'm gonna dry this for one minute with the fan. Okay, for this, we're gonna need 70% rubbing alcohol, a nice little sponge, and a small bucket with, with the alcohol in it. Now, you put the sponge in and you really squeeze out the excess so that it's not running in and, 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 and making the, the, uh, the ink come out of the wrinkles, so you just, Rub it on in just real light touch. It's an artsy touch. Get in, get those teeth, the eyes, and just go over the whole thing. And what I like to do is once I've done that, I've got kind of a, a dirty sponge on that side. So I'll flip it over and get it a little cleaner. See how it's staying in the cracks? This is a, boy, this is just, in my opinion, the best way to paint. Um, there's lots of different techniques and things, but this just gets, gets those details very realistically and very quickly. Now I'm gonna clean the uh, sponge more again, squeeze it pretty darn hard. We get in, we'll make sure we get those eyes really cleaned off and the teeth. You can get in the little antenna here with your finger or whatever. But you leave it dark in the ears and in the dark, the deep spots, just leave it real dark. And, and you can play around with this stuff. You know, you can put it on overall light. A lot of times I'll put it on lighter over the whole thing and then I'll get it really dark around the eyes, nose and mouth. And it's just a little more dramatic that way. Okay, so now that he's rubbed out, he's almost done. So you just scoop it out and just pour it on the sculpture. And you can get, it's a little bit sloppy, you know. All right, then you get your brush and you get every detail. I like to go north and south, east and west so that you're for sure getting everything. Um, try not to be too rough, you know, you don't wanna scratch your sculpture, but the chip brush will allow you to get in there and get, get all the little details. And you can just keep going back. Now this is where, one of the things I like about the paint, if this was just clay, especially if it was clay that was a little bit dry, like you do sometimes when you're sculpting, letting it dry out, the clay itself absorbs some of the water and it, um, it makes for a weaker, 
a weaker mold right where you need it strong, right in the inside surface. Now I'm going to go over just to make sure I've hit these areas thoroughly, even though I'm pushing some of the plaster off. That's okay. This stuff's not that expensive. All right, now I'm going to put some more on. You want to kind of keep it covered and, and at some point you want to quit disrupting, you know, because it'll, it'll start, it'll be starting to um, set. I'm not positive I got these antenna real good, so I'm going to hit those once more. Now, there's points like we're at right now where you've caught up to, to, the, um, to the set time of the plaster. Now, if you're doing a bigger, um, a bigger mold, it might get ahead of you. And so there's times when we're working on really big molds that we will um, have two or three people on it just because you know, you can't really change the set time of the plaster. It's going to set when it's going to set. Now, you can make runnier batches and things, but I, I don't recommend it. I think USGs, roughly 30% water to 70% plaster is, is very good. And, uh, and we're doing that the, uh, the easy way by just... Um, putting it in by hand, but, but that's kind of the goal, to get close to that mixture, and that's how to do it without the scale. You know, we've got this big heavyweight scale, and then we've got this big, like, prop pro propeller that stirs it and so forth. Okay, so now we wait. The plaster will, will set, but you, you get to a point where it's like, eh, it's too runny to keep pouring plaster, it just runs off. Um, and that's okay. You can, you can check out your sculpture thoroughly. A lot of times you'll miss things like undercut. So at a time like this, you could try to not disrupt it. It's not going to hurt it at this point, but just make sure you're getting all the, uh, the undercuts well, uh, even though they're hard to see. Um, and then you just, you just chill for a few minutes till it's, it's a little bit thicker and you put on another layer. Okay, so the plaster is a little thicker now, and you can scoop it up with your hand. And so I like to kind of just shimmy it on there, and see it's now it's thick enough that it'll stay. Something that's really important is that you think about uh, the sculpture underneath and how thick you are, because I've seen molds where it's like four inches thick in one spot, and then an eighth inch thick on the tip of a thing. So, you know, be conscious of that. Be conscious of, okay, I got these ears that stick out. I need to make sure that I get some plaster on those ears. Um, now, I'm very confident I have enough down in this area where it's sagging to, uh, and I'll pull some of that up. But you just basically take this thicker plaster and work it up. And, and just be aware where stuff is before it gets covered up. So you get plenty of plaster on it. Now we're gonna do another batch after this one for the hemp, but um, the, 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 the thing that's nice about a second batch, even though it's not absolutely necessary, I mean, you can do it in, in one batch when you get really good, um, especially something small like this. But since it, this is something that you're new to, the second batch just gives you the ability to make sure you got enough plaster everywhere so that it's not going to uh, be too thin. And so now that we have all of these shapes in between the scales sunken down a little bit, 
I'm using isopropyl alcohol to smooth this out because when you're using water, the clay will really start to soak it up. Now, that's gonna make the clay mushy and you don't really want super mushy clay when you're doing detail work like this. So I'm using isopropyl alcohol because it will evaporate out of the clay quite a bit faster than water would. So I'm just spraying that down, spraying the brush to relieve any surface tension. It's gonna help it not really pick up too much clay in the beginning. And you know, let's go over, work it around. I think maybe a little bit more might not be a bad idea. I'll typically do this in circles because what we're trying to do here is round off the edge of every single scale. And as you'll notice, the uh, little slurry that's forming is starting to sink into the cracks in between the scales. Now, there's a, uh, we're going to get rid of that in a second here, and I'll show you how that's done. But right now, I'm not worried about that. I'm just focusing on making sure these scales are nice and round. All right, so I think that's good. Now, the way we're gonna get rid of this slurry that has sunken into the cracks a little bit is just taking the isopropyl alcohol and again, blasting it. And what that's gonna do is the uh, clay that has mixed with the alcohol that's sunken in between these scales, the alcohol is just gonna break that down even more and really blast it away. And you'll use a lot of alcohol doing this method. So that's something to keep in mind. All right, so I think this is a good consistency. I'm not sure exactly how to describe it to you, but you don't want it to be too hard. You don't want it to be too soft either. So it's really just practice and finding the balance that you like most. Now what I'm gonna do here is just brush some baby powder onto this. What that is going to do is relieve the uh, tack that is on the surface of the clay. So as I keep carving into this, it's not gonna wanna stick to itself. And what I'm gonna do next is just take that Kemper W21 again and go in and redefine the edge of each scale. Now we're gonna take some more isopropyl alcohol, not quite as much this time, and just smooth it out a little bit more. This is a lot of doing scales is typically just a lot of back and forth, going in, redefining them, smoothing them out. Okay, we are now dry. So the first thing I'm gonna do is use rubbing alcohol. Now this is a maroon 70% rubbing alcohol with a little bit of red and a teeny bit of black. So I'm just gonna spray it. And then, now you can let this dry a little bit. It's probably better, but for our purposes, I'm gonna rub it out right away. This is pure 70% rubbing alcohol. So you get it, <clears throat> dip it in the bucket and then squeeze it out real good. And then just rub it off. I like to get it all off and then flip it over to get it clean. That's that part. Now, going with um, black FW ink, and this is mixed with 50-50 um, with rubbing alcohol. It doesn't have to be, but it just, it becomes like its own solvent, so it's nice. Okay, that's the iris. Then, <clears throat> 
coming in with, um, this is uh, white FW, no rubbing alcohol, because we want it to cover, and, uh, and a little uh, uh, process blue, or I think it's called uh, roundy blue or something like that. Now you can use a uh, use a, uh, the back of a paintbrush for the dot, but we're in a hurry, so I'm going to use the black again. All right, <clears throat> now, red veins. You always want to have red veins in your bloody eyebrow. Now, I'm going to come out of the muscle a little bit and with some straighter lines. Just where it kind of grabs the eyeball. This is a uh, <clears throat> just a regular red ink ballpoint pen. Now, the veins... Going to put in here because you know, you back where you can't see, there's veins and it's creepy. Veins are always creepy. So once you get that, <clears throat> we're going to go for the dead eye look because, you know, it's no longer in the eye. And again, it's just a little bit creepy. And this is off-white. It's uh, basically white FW ink with uh, a little bit of... Um, 70% alcohol and um, and uh, maybe 50-50. And of course, to get it off white, you need a little bit of, of uh, yellow, a little bit of like antler brown, and a little bit of black, but just teensy bits. So this will give us that dead looking zombie kind of effect. That's good. Now, I'm going to hit it with a little gloss. Now, this gloss we've used before. It's um, uh, Liquitex Gloss Medium. Not Gloss Medium Gel, just the Gloss Medium. <clears throat> nope, that's the wrong one. I might have said a bad word if I sprayed it with that. OK. So. <clears throat> Get the eyeball real good. Oops. All right. Okay. We're going to blood it. And this is the um, uh, Liquitex Gloss Gel mixed with food color. The food color thins it out a little bit. Uh, and you just you just gotta work the the right mixture that's the right amount of thickness and the right amount of uh, darkness. And um, I just you just do it to to taste. Sometimes you you know you want thicker blood, sometimes thinner. So many things are so